this all could have been avoided. Um, I, I wasn't a threat to the company. Did you see any reasonable explanation for being fired? Um, no. The only information I was given when I was let go was that the cafe was going in a different direction. Whereas, less than a week beforehand, I was told how great the cafe looked and how good everything was going so far. So, I'm not exactly sure what the other direction was. Hi, my name is Sarah, and welcome back to Curious Rabbit Media. If this is your first time here, I invite you to hit that like button if you're watching on Facebook, or hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, just to make sure that you stay tuned for future videos and articles that are to come. So today we're going to be talking about something that has happened recently in Buffalo, New York, which is a very popular local coffee chain known as Spot Coffee has successfully voted to unionize. This all began back in June of 2019 when three long-standing Spot employees were fired after showing interest in forming a union. My name is Lucas Weinstein. In October, it would have been five years that I worked for Spot Coffee. I was the cafe manager of Spot Coffee in Williamsville on Main Street. My name's Philip Neitinger, and I had been with Spot Coffee for about four years. My name is Phoenix Cerny, and I was fired for forming a uh, union after uh, four and a half years as a worker at Spot Coffee. The reason that people at Spot want to form a union is that they are tired of feeling like they can get fired for any reason and without any warning. They want for all cafe employees, at the very least, to be making minimum wage. Because right now they're qualifying as tipped employees and are, at their base pay, only making about nine and change an hour. Employees at Spot want to have a more hand-in-hand -hand relationship with the upper management and not feel like they're this ambiguous de like being above that like they never have any contact with. At Spot, we saw an erosion of the, the rights, the dignity, the respect that we experienced as employees. Uh, we saw the dissolution of important steps in training and uh, you know respect to staffing and stressful situations. And we said enough is enough. The fundamental level of disrespect from the company was what drove me to want to do this. I think the service industry is an area that people haven't really considered as something that should or can be unionized. And I think that's something that we want to challenge because right now the like retail and service industries are the biggest in America and they're also the people that are being treated the worst because they're considered disposable. We wanted to kind of stand up for ourselves and have a more say in our workplace. There was an announcement that Rochester Spot had unionized. Maybe a day or two later, I caught wind that there was in the people who helped organize Rochester Workers United, um, representatives were coming from there just to give an information meeting in Buffalo about what had happened in Rochester and what it meant in for the company. Went to the meeting, um, was told that management couldn't be a part of it. It would be a good idea for me not to say much of anything. So I said, good with me. Two weeks later, I was let go. And two days after that, uh, Phil and Phoenix were let go. It was 16 days. It was only two weeks after Lucas, Phoenix, and Phil had shown interest in what a union was and how to form it that these three long-standing employees were fired. Spot manager Lucas Weinstein was also pressured to give out the names of who exactly was at the meeting to gain more information about what a union is. Lucas refused to give out the names in order to protect the privacy of those who attended the meeting. When the National Labor Relations Board looks at it, they predominantly look at timing as the main element in making the decision about if a union was involved or not. And if they didn't, otherwise uh, the company could say, you know, this person didn't tuck their shirt in. But if they went to a union meeting the night before, it's pretty clear what the motives there were. So for these folks, uh, Phoenix and Phil, two of the fired workers, hosted a union meeting. Um, and Lucas, the manager, attended so he could answer questions for his employees. And he, for him, we believe he was fired because he didn't give up names to the employer of people who attended the meeting. And then Phoenix and Phil both had been really vocal about wanting a union. The firings were such a cruel reaction to something that was a really innocent informational meeting. 
marketing and it's kind of helped folks build the campaign and so from now we've just been getting as many workers on board as we can building solidarity um, that's really the basis of the union it's people power lucas really only had glowing recommendations from management and from employees as well as phoenix and philip who were very much a part of the community who consistently came into this well-loved coffee chain They shouldn't have even bothered with them in the first place. It was a lot of talking without saying anything substantial, uh, which the public saw through immediately. Um, in the end, their non-statements ended, ended up aiding us greatly because it really solidified the community support behind us. It was a non-statement. I don't feel as though it shed any light on the situation. It claimed that what the union put out was untrue, but didn't offer any contradictory claims or anything of that nature. So, not the strongest showing in my opinion. And all that, the uh, statements that they made were doing was just uh, existing as a receipt for their lack of understanding of their community and their customers. Because the public immediately saw through the thin facade of their statements and uh, decided to let them know in the most convenient way possible when uh, replying to a business you're not happy with, and that is through social media. I think they know the community supports the workers more than the company at this point. I think that they were massively mishandling their PR, and I think they realized that they were looking really bad, so instead of admitting anything, they just wanted to take it on their own. We won with an 88% yes vote. We're very excited. We've begun the process of reaching out to everyone within our bargaining unit to find out what is important to them when we begin negotiations. Um, and we're also we're also in the beginning steps of reaching out to Spock Rochester to form a, a greater statewide presence um, among organized spots. The boycott is still definitely going on, and I hope that everybody still continues to be on guard and support us as we push through these next uh, couple of chapters of organizing. It's really down to how they cooperate with us during negotiation. It's not over yet, and we're just hoping that we can work together on it. Successfully forming a barista union is a pretty big deal, considering that most service workers do not have a union representing them, and therefore it's harder for them to gain benefits in the service industry. Opinions about unions vary. Some people see unions as more of a hassle with the union fees that are required in order to become a member. Some see it as a potential to stifle individual creativity and motivation because most of the benefits are focused around what is best for the collective rather than the individual. Those that oppose unions also support the right for companies to fire any employee for any reason. On the flip side to that, unions can positively benefit the entire industry across the board based on what their bargaining agreement comes to. So even those who are not members of a particular union could still be benefiting from the bargaining and contract agreements that are being dealt. Union members must be fired for a just cause, meaning that there has to be proof of misconduct or consistent disciplinary actions before an employee can be fired. And usually there is a grievance process before it can actually go through. So this offers some more job security for people who otherwise have none in the service industry. A union is a membership organization that uh, represents people in the struggle for wages, benefits, and conditions. When we were at our height, which was uh, approximately 1958 through, say, 65, 70, uh, this was mainly in a manufacturing-based economy. And that has dwindled to where it's, uh, instead of 33% of all production, all uh, employment in this country, it's down about 8 percent. The uh, manufacturing section of the economy was heavily, heavily unionized. Well, those jobs are gone. Not completely, but to a large extent. And as, as, as much as the unions have tried to hold on to that percentage, uh, everything has been stacked up that makes that very difficult. That's another big point that we got from customers who don't really understand why folks are picketing. 
um, you know, this is a small company. If you want to unionize, go to a Starbucks or a huge chain. But the fact is, Spot has, I think, at least 16 locations. Um, and one of the one of the big complaints we've been getting from a lot of workers is that the owner doesn't even know their names and he doesn't introduce himself, he gets his coffee, he doesn't talk to his workers, um, even though it's a company that's large but not large enough that it would be particularly difficult to know everyone's names or at least faces. So it doesn't have that small company feel, I think, that most people associate with Spot and its branding. I see Anton, who's the CEO of the company, maybe twice, three times a year. He shuffles down from Toronto and hits some of the cafes. There is the notion that it's your neighborhood cafe, but it hasn't been that case for the last 13, 12, 13 years. I would think of the R firings as a catalyst. It has only inspired people more. I think they thought that they could fire the three of us and have it act as like a warning sign to people from attempting to unionize beyond that. It hasn't necessarily worked in their favor. Since the firing of Lucas, Phoenix, and Philip, there was a public outcry and outrage at these firings. This really caused a spark and momentum pushing forward to successfully unionize and form one of the first very few barista unions in the U.S. My name is Michaela, and I'm here because I support the right of workers to get together, make decisions collectively, unionize, organize themselves, and to not be penalized by their workplace for asserting themselves. Although their fight has been successful thus far, they still have quite a way to go and are asking for the continued support of the community around them as they push forward in negotiating their contract with Spot Coffee. We appreciate all of the people who have reached out and have spoken publicly in support of us and their denigration of Spot's practices in their firing of us. We would like you to know that we're not taking this lying down and this isn't something that's gonna go away until we're given the right and it's spotters across the board are given the right to organize and demand to be treated properly. This won't go away. If they asked me, if they called me up and asked for my opinion, it's only make it make a deal with the union. And um, if you did make a deal with the union, that uh, your business will, will go back to where it was. Right now people are not going in there anywhere near the at the frequency they were before, because Buffalo is a union town. And the, the, word, the word is out because we've held a series of rallies and demonstrations. There's a labor dispute, and it's hurting their business. And, the only, and it's going to continue to hurt their business if they fight this in, in a nasty way. And, and they started off fighting it in a very nasty way. They fired three guys who they should not have fired. And, and this is a strong union town. This is the, Buffalo isn't the, the national average we're way ahead of the national average for union uh, concentration. And um, when, a when a struggle like this pops up, and they do it from time to time, um, we're in the forefront of this stuff. We don't, we're not taking this lightly. If the ball is in their court, if they want to say that they support our right to organize, then they need to negotiate with us in good faith. They need to uh, not try and obfuscate the process now that we've successfully voted and to uh, meet us at the table in a reasonable manner. From the get-go, they always said they supported this. After Rochester formed their union, they said, hey, we're looking forward to this. And unfortunately, uh, very often, a company will say one thing and do another. They've been doing that the entire time. I really hope that they really take to heart that we're all watching them and that they need to be in their best behavior as we move forward. We couldn't have done this without the support of the community. We would not have been this successful if they had boycotted and caused the company to take us seriously. You can stay posted on what is coming up for Spot Coffee Unionizing in the weeks and months to come on Facebook. I will leave a link in the description bar with that page and also with any other links in order to help support their cause and support them in their efforts to unionize and gain more rights in the service industry. So what do you think? I want to hear from you guys about whether or not you are pro-union or anti-union and what your reasoning for that is and what you think about Spot Coffee unionizing as baristas and what this could mean for the service industry moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I ask that you hit that share button in order to 
spread the word about what is happening with Spot Coffee unionizing and also invite you to like Curious Rabbit Media in order to stay tuned for what is coming next. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but until then, stay curious.